Okay, <laughs> welcome everybody. Uh, well, you see two persons today uh, because today um, David is going to do most of the, the showing of technique. Well, he's going to do all showing of the techniques. Uh, I will try, you, uh, try to talk you through it. So uh, you will hear my voice and then David will uh, explain. Last Monday, I did a uh, falling seminar, webinar about the basics of falling, but my falling skills are not that good anymore, while David has excellent falling skills, so I found him prepared to uh, demonstrate the techniques uh, for you today. Um, well, it's already the third one we're doing, so welcome. Slowly we are getting a little bit better in this stuff, although sometimes we have some technical difficulty, difficulties still, so uh, sorry for that, please stay with us. Um, well, at the bottom of the screen, like, subscribe, donate money, <laughs> something like, uh, like that, buy stuff from us, um, and please let yourself be heard in the chat, uh, so I will be talking, and I'm looking at the chat box at the same time, so if you have anything to say, or if there is anything you want David to do in front of the camera, he will do it, but he said, I will keep my clothes on. Sorry, ladies, not that, not that kind of channel today. Um, so, um, welcome. I'm going to move to the uh, the microphone now, and then I will talk you through it. So, oh, uh, the webinar today is about falling, and then uh, more like the intermediate and advanced falling techniques. Uh, but before we do that, we'll go through the uh, basic falling techniques uh, one more time. Uh, can people hear me? That's like question number one. I think it should be okay. But if people in the chat would like to tell me if my voice is audible, then please let me know. As I told last Monday, uh, when we uh, teach falling, uh, we want to start low and slow. So no reason to rush through the techniques. Uh, so that usually means that when we start, we start very low to the ground, just sitting actually. And we usually start with a, a technique called hubang nagbob in Korean. And hubang nagbob is the back fall. The back fall starts, just sit down and stretch your legs forward. And as we all know, the most important body part to protect when you're doing your falling techniques is your head. So in, we don't want our head to touch the ground. Uh, in this case, with the uh, back fall, Hubang Nagbob, we're doing this by tucking our chin in then uh, cross your arms in front of your chest, roll back, so slam the floor in a 45 degree angle with your arms and move your legs all the way backward. Can you make a 45 degree turn, uh, David, so we can see it a little bit from the side? So it's like tuck your chin in, arms crossed, roll back, and make sure that the back of your head doesn't touch the ground. From this technique, students can easily progress to doing the same technique, but from a squat. So if you go in a squat, actually it's the same thing. Tuck your chin in, arms crossed, roll back, hit, and back again. And then this one, now David can stand up. So you're standing up, and actually what you're doing, you're standing up, you're going into your squat, and you roll. So it's... Actually, it's not more or less difficult than the previous one. You're just standing, then you move to a squat, and you fall down. And as students become uh, more familiar with this, this technique, they can do it a little bit faster. So the, the, the standing up and then sitting down and falling, like make it one motion. The next one we usually do to progress to the jumping back fall is so move uh, back, first move back a little bit, standing. So then 
jump forward into a squat and make your normal backfall. That's already a jumping one, a normal backfall. So move back. So just jump into a squat and backfall. Okay? And then when uh, students can do this faster. So then when they're going back, then they would, they'll kick their legs a little bit forward to turn it slowly into a jump. And eventually, they can look, if you can go from a squat, so it's not just the jumping part. So it's not just jumping, it's also kicking out your legs while you do it. Can you show us one time? One. Okay. Important here is not to land on your lower back, but more like on your shoulders. If you land on your lower back, like all the air gets pushed out of your lungs, it's a terrible feeling, I can tell you from experience. But so actually, the higher you jump, the more time you have to rotate, and the easier it is to land on your upper back. Can you show us? One. One more time, please. So. And now students can slowly progress from a squatting position to a standing position. But they don't, it's not like, oh, it's either squat or stand. You can also assume like a, like a medium squat. Here, and now try to uh, do it. So now they, they, you've got, because you're in a medium squat and your legs are bent, there's like more possibility to jump. So you can jump and hit. Okay, so that's it for the back fall. Now we're progressing to the side fall. So the side fall again, this is one I'm sure Tom can do. Just lie down on the floor. Again, your arm straight in about a 45 degree angle from your, uh, from your body. The other hand on your chest, chin tucked to your chest again. Make sure is that the leg that's pointing up is that the knee is pointing up straight yeah? and not in an angle. You don't want your legs to squash together and catch something that's <laughs> in between. And the easy thing is now just to roll to the other side. So roll, roll, okay? So once the students are comfortable with this, now instead of rolling, like they lift their butt up on their shoulders and then fall to the other side. So again, one, two, three. Okay. The, the, the position they're in now is quite important because there's a lot of techniques that end up in this position. Okay, from here we uh, progress to a standing variation. So we're not doing this in a squat. Why a standing variation? With this technique, you can easily like control how high or low you are uh, falling. So David, he first steps out with his left foot about in a 45 degree angle. Then he swings his right foot in front and makes the side fall. So you can see how easily David can control how hard he's going to fall. So can you show it in like, let's say three or four different stages, David? Then when you want to progress to a jumping variation, actually you, you still, you step out, and then with the other leg, you kind of kick to the inside or the back of this leg, and like you kick it up and <laughs> fall. So now you know why I asked David, David to do the falling and why I'm not doing it. So one kick <laughs> and fall. Then it's on to the front fall, Chonbang Nakbop. So this one, we usually start on the knees. And again, students can control how like, uh, hard they make the fall. So now David is already up, but if you sit more down, David, so just sit down and just already bring your hands up and just kind of move forward here. So there's a very low, very gentle variation of the soft fall. But as he progresses, he can bring his body like straight, 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 and just 
fall. Of course, what's important in this technique, if you want to protect your head, is to turn it sideways. So can you demonstrate it one more time? Okay. So after students are comfortable with this one, again, we move to the squat position. And now there's two variations. The first variation is where you leave your foot on the floor and you propel your body forward. And the other variation is where you kick your feet back and then fall. When you make this technique, especially the last one, spread your legs and that way you also spread the impact you're making. So the forward one, please. And the backward one. Okay. So the forward one, David can already control how hard the fall is going to be by controlling the angle. So if he just goes like, let's say in a, in a two degree angle, it's like almost over the floor, this one is kind of easy, but he could also do it in, let's say a 45 degree angle or even a 90 degree angle. The next one, so that's the one where you kick your legs back. Here it is also a build up to the jumping variation. So you can just, actually the easiest one is first place your uh, hand, arms on the floor and now kick your legs back. Yeah, so this is a very easy variation, but eventually the kicking back of the legs and the landing on your arms have to be done simultaneously like this, and then David can control like how high he jumps, how hard the fall is going to, to be. And so this is already build up to the fourth stage, the uh, jumping one. But now please stand up. And can you move uh, this way, please? No, turn this way. Yeah. So here, if you just fall forward, David can control how hard he's falling by how wide his legs are apart. So David, I guess, is about five and a half feet, so one meter 70 something. So, but now by placing his uh, legs very wide, hey, now his height has gone down to maybe like four feet. So now when he falls forward, the impact on the floor is less. And slowly, he can decide how hard he wants to fall by placing his feet closer and closer to each other. Like this. Then the other variation, so that's where you kick back your, uh, your legs. Again, what he can do is first go to like a half squat and now kick back his legs and fall. But he can also, if he feels comfortable doing it, just kick his legs back and fall. Okay? We already made a beginning with the jumping variation. So that's the one where you're in a squat. So again, David can control how high he jumps. He can jump quite high and go. So, and then this one can easily like if he's standing up and just jump. And usually there's not a lot of difference for students between like doing it from a squat or just from a standing position. Okay. From the front fall, it is now on to the uh, forward roll, the front roll, and it's named Muzong Nagbob, but sometimes we call it Koyangi Nagbob. Koyangi is a cat in Korean, so it means you have to roll soft and silent like a cat. Um, the easiest variation, and can you turn a little bit more like a 45 degree angle this way, is um, where you place your arm, like twist it on the floor here. So put your shoulder all the way on the floor, use your other hand for support and slowly push yourself over your shoulder. Can you show it one more time? And can you show it from the front one time? In the beginning, students will have a, well, 
everybody has a favorite role. Uh, so also beginning students will quite soon realize, oh, this one is my favorite sh shoulder. Uh, where, where I teach, and I think it's true for most schools, in the beginning, so let's say about until yellow or orange belt, it's okay if a student only uses his or her favorite uh, shoulder for the, for the basic role. And usually at Chongguan, at green belt, we say, okay, now you have to be able to demonstrate the basic role with both shoulders. More advanced rolling, like jumping rolling and stuff, is practically always done on the shoulder that the student feels most comfortable uh, with, okay? Another buildup for the roll is again where we start from squat. And usually what I ask students to do first is just do like a normal forward roll. So hands forward, tuck your head in, and roll forward. And we would say that's something you learned in kindergarten, so you should still be able to do it. And then when I know that students can do this, so I let them place, instead of placing their hands to the front, place them to the side, tuck your head in, and roll over your shoulder. Okay? And then from there, again, you can slowly progress to making your squat a little bit higher. And what students usually do is automatically, they place one foot in front of the, the other. Can you place one foot in front of the other? And a, a, bit, a little bit higher squat. A squat position. And then one foot in front of the other. Okay. Um, another way, because what, what we usually want in the basic role is for people like if your right foot is forward, you're using your right shoulder to roll. When your left foot is forward, you're using your left shoulder to roll. One way to accomplish this is to put the uh, student with his both feet next to each other and then don't tell him to roll forward, but let's say move to the right side. Okay, go into your squat a little bit and make your roll. And this way, students automatically roll over the right shoulder. So move to the side. And you can go as low as you want to. Or even, just like, can you place your feet next to each other again? So and then already put your other hand on the floor for support. And roll. Again, there is no need for us to hurry our students to go it higher, higher, faster, faster. First, they have to be able to do this one before they can progress to the next uh, level. Eventually, the role has to look something like, oh, you got one, one foot forward, you're moving down, and rowing. In the beginning, we're putting a lot of form into this. So we're telling the student, place one foot forward, put the other hand on the floor, then the other one in between, look over your shoulder, push yourself forward, and roll. What we have to be careful for, and what our students have to be careful for, not to make this form too rigid, is where your shoulders become too tense, and then go. So we want our shoulders to be low, flexible, natural, and go. Another point of attention is what a lot of students do. So they, they uh, start, let's say, in, in their position. But your, uh, in this case, David's left foot is where the tipping point is. So if all his weight is behind his left foot, it becomes very difficult to actually make uh, a decent roll. So what David has to learn is to push his weight forward over his left foot, so shift his weight, and then make the roll. And then if he wants to be more flexible, 
what it does, like when it moves forward, is bent from the waist down. And roll. Can you show it a few more times? Okay. Then there is the variation. So this is the variation is where you stand up is the variation where you lie down. So you do this, hitting the floor, staying in your position. You end up in the same ending position as we had with the side fall. Another thing is, when you do the uh, like basic roll, you're bending your back leg. And, so, so that it, and, and you keep it bent so that when you roll, it... <laughs> No, the basic one. Yeah, so then you're bending your back uh, leg so that, look, your leg is now under your front leg and you can get up. But with the other variation where you lie down, actually you keep your rear leg straight and you end up. Can you show it over the other side? Uh, once you can do this and just lie down on the floor, you can also try it with standing up. Okay. And sometimes we ask students for fun, like keep your uh, leg that is straight off the floor so it shouldn't hit, shouldn't touch the floor at all. So it's one. So, uh, as I said, the basic roll is when you've got your right foot forward, you're rolling over your right shoulder. When you've got your left foot forward, you're rolling over your left shoulder. But, of course, there is a variation where you've got your right foot forward, but you're rolling over your left shoulder. So, usually, once students are comfortable with the basic one, it takes some time getting used to this one. So this is the basic one, right foot forward, the right shoulder roll. We also have like the right foot forward, left shoulder roll. We can also do this, like, uh, can you turn around, David? No, uh, with your back to me. So now he's standing with his back to me, but he's turning to the right and then rolling over his left shoulder. So using his left shoulder for a turn. Can you show it one more time, please? Okay. Or you can do it with a circle technique. So if you do a circle technique, turn on Bob, it's one foot forward. And now roll, so like over your, let's say, wrong shoulder. One more time, please. And if David wants to, slowly he can add like a little jump to it. A little jump. So make a normal roll with a little jump. Okay, one more time, please. From this, now we're going to the uh, back fall again. It's going to be a back roll. And I see I forgot to make a graphic for that. So I'm just going to turn on uh, this one. Actually, we're first, like we're starting with our tumbler technique. Uduki Nagbob. So this one starts like sitting down on your butt again. Yeah. One leg forward and then the other foot here. And we're starting out the same way as the normal back fall. So it's a little bit forward and back. And try to kick back your straight leg all the way. One. If students are like capable, try to touch uh, the floor with your toes. One. Here. 
that's a good one. Now, like from the same one, so he's, David is going back. But then when he comes forward, he pushes himself up. One, here, like this. And now from this position, he can just like actually like push his butt back, lean forward a bit, and roll. So sitting down, leaning forward a bit, push your butt back, and roll. Okay. Now we're going to do this with a change. So can you uh, turn forward again, please, David? On both knees. On both knees. Okay. So lift up your right leg. So let, make your toes face the right. Again, just what we would say is like with your shoulder, touch your knee. Okay. Now push your butt back and make your roll. And come forward and sit down again. Okay. It's now left leg up. Let your shoulder touch your knee, push your butt back, and roll. What's important, if you can do it forward again, is when you're coming back, is that your knee is still straight. So here, when he comes back, his, so his front knee, his right knee, should be pointing straight forward and not inside or outside. So this is wrong, very wrong for your knees, something that you don't want. So make sure that your leg stays in a straight line. Okay. Can you show the tumbler uh, a few times, please? As you can see, David is already like adding a little slide to the technique. So can you do that one slowly? One, so he slides in with his rear leg and now rolls. So what he does, he makes his uh, balance point a lot smaller. So now he has to fall back and roll. Okay, so can you show it a few times with a big slide? And now we can do the same from a standing position. And the easiest way is just like turn a little bit to one side, like open your one foot, put your knee, other knee on the floor, and make your tumbler. And get up again. So turn your one foot out, put your other knee on the floor, and roll. But then again, slowly, he can do this by like turning his foot out, stepping out, like making that sliding motion again, and go. Can you show that one a few times, please? So advanced students do this, and they hold their belt. Like intermediate or beginner students, they can place their hands in a 45 degree angle next to their body. So the getting up, so when you get up, you want to move forward. And sometimes people, when they are uh, lazy or tired, so what they do, they move like inside and they're using their legs and then they're turning inside. And, they're, and that's why then they're turning their knee inside uh, as well. When they come up, one, two, three. So that is, Bad technique and it's something that should be prevented at all times. Not just because it's like, what is it? Uh, your physical condition maybe isn't good enough to actually do the technique, but also getting up like this, you can injure your knee, something that you certainly don't want. So don't do it like that. But forward. And the more you swing your like front leg back, the more momentum you get going forward when you want to get up. So like move it forward makes it easier 
to get up. So now it becomes more like an abs exercise than a falling exercise. Okay. From, um, so I am not, not a fan of the, of the neck whip. There should be no neck whip. So what, what uh, sometimes students, uh, okay, no, wait, I, I understand what you mean. It's like when David goes uh, back, he uh, arches his, uh, what is it, head back, uh, like this, but before he falls, he's bringing his chin back to his uh, chest. So actually, that's more like an exercise to, hey, you have to put your, uh, what is it, chin to your chest. W what's more important is that when you fall back and you have your uh, chin to your chest, is now don't let go of your, uh, of your neck. So you're uh, chin doesn't leave your chest until you are back up uh, again. Again, this is for uh, what is it, intermediate and advanced uh, falling. The, uh, what we can easily do from once uh, students know how to do the tumbler is to go to the back roll. We start from the sitting position. No, from the like a knee position. Okay, so um, move your uh, right foot forward. No, but can you do it with your back towards us? Okay, so he places his right leg in a 45 degree angle outward. Oh, sorry, his right arm. Okay. Then his left hand goes over the right side of his head. Again, push your butt back and roll and as you can see like can you now do it like in reverse to so actually make it make it the full, full roll so what he's doing though with your arm so your arm is out so when you roll back with your arm out right? now when you roll forward with your arm out in the same position so that's why we do the front roll sometimes with the arm to the side instead of what most people are used to, to the inside. So one and forward. Can you show it one time from the side, please? Two. And can you now, sh uh, and now over the left side, please? No, don't, don't turn because then we can still see it from the inside. So one, two, back, and roll. And again, once they're comfortable with this, you can do it standing up, down, and up. One important thing here is don't let your knee touch the floor when you're rolling back. So your knee should not touch the floor. Make sure that your momentum is over here. The front roll and the back roll are basically the same. You're like in the same posture. So when you do a front roll, your knee doesn't touch the floor. When you make the back roll, also you don't want your knee to touch the floor. Okay. From this one, now we progress to the, what we call soft front fall or sometimes people call it the banana. So this one again starts on your knees. And put your hands forward. And first just kick one leg up and make your soft front fall here. So one more time, please. So one leg up and go. Can you show it from the side? Then you can progress slowly to a squat. And first one leg is okay, so you just kick one leg up. And go down, and eventually two legs. Yeah. Um, like of course you need some arm power with here, 
So sometimes we will just teach a student to do push-ups first and then progress to a handstand. Can you show a, a small handstand? Here. Well, David is very good at his handstand. Yeah. So once people can do this from a squat, they can do it standing up. So first just put your hands on the floor and with one leg, so just kick one leg up and down. One more time, please. And then we can progress to standing up, putting your hands on the floor, and kick both legs up. So uh, what you, you don't want your body just to roll down. You want it to move a little bit forward, like a Hindu push-up, over the floor. Here, like this. Can you show it one more time? And once students are comfortable with this and they're agile enough, they can do it with a jump. Or even a jump and a twist. Okay. So far, it has been mostly basic falling, although we have some, some uh, what is it, advanced uh, techniques. The next part is forward roll with a jump, and for that we're going to take an obstacle. Um, I strongly recommend against uh, using persons as your obstacle. So uh, this obstacle is definitely not suited for uh, beginners, but there's things that are a bit lower than this one and still soft. Better to use these than other people to roll over. We're basically, we have two jumping rolls. We've got the far jumping roll and we've got the high jumping roll. Can you demonstrate a far jumping roll once, David? So with this roll, what you try is to jump as far as possible. But to get as far as possible, still you also have to make height. So you're not jumping down into the, in the floor. First you try to get up and then over. And then you can go to a high jumping roll. Can you... Uh, one more time, please. Okay. Once students are uh, comfortable with these obstacles, we can start using them to progress to the so-called flip fall or Kung Jung Wei on Nagbob. So that's a hard fall. You can twist it one more time. Now it's at 24, so yeah, like that. So now it's in its lowest position. So what we start with is kind of like the, uh, the front roll where you stay down and hit the floor, but now instead of using the floor, he's using the obstacle to make the fall. So it means he will drop off at the end. So again, this obstacle is quite high. I recommend you get something a little bit lower than, uh, than this one. And this one is also quite wide. So when you're using this one, make sure that you don't put your hands like on the front of the obstacle now, because now when he rolls, uh, it becomes very uncomfortable. So place your arm all the way on the obstacle and roll. So this way, David will get used to the higher, like the harder fall that he is making. And again, if he's comfortable, he can do it a little bit faster. So just like walk into it and roll. Can you take the uh, obstacle away again? Sometimes people use a gymnastics mat to teach falling, but I'd say you have to be um, what is it? careful with that one. This might sound strange because, hey, the mat should actually protect you because your fall uh, becomes a lot softer, 
but also this kind of like soft uh, cushioning doesn't give you any feedback, so you don't actually learn if your landing is correct or not. You can do a wrong fall on this one. Don't feel anything of it. Think you're like, oh, I'm capable of doing this, but actually you're teaching yourself bad techniques. Uh, of course, there's definitely use for these kind of mats, but you also have to be aware of the limitations it uh, can, uh, can have. Can you take it away again? So when you're teaching the, the flip fall, uh, actually I would recommend uh, to have first, like doing it on your own without any help is quite difficult and doesn't feel something that a lot of people think, oh, this is like a natural thing to do. So usually what you do as a, a teacher is first throw your student. So maybe like start with a hip throw, yeah, where you've got a lot of control over the way the student uh, falls then maybe progress to like something like the outward uh, wrist lock. So Kwanjolki Bob is where you still have a lot of control about how the way the student uh, falls. So well, since now we've got the corona thing going on, so we cannot touch each other, uh, you'll have to do without that one. Maybe that's for, for some uh, other time. So once a student is comfor comfortable doing the, the flip fall uh, by being thrown, he can try it just doing it on his own. The way we teach this one is first put your front arm in a V-shape position. What the um, what is the student has to learn is that he has to go through the V straight. Sometimes people they, they turn to their side, but that actually means when you do when you turn to your side, is that you will end up falling on your back, something that is not comfortable uh, at all. So also when you're teaching your student this and you're first, I would like put him in this position, then take his uh, right wrist in a lock. So he has some support there and then he can move over and maybe first just roll uh, to get comfortable doing this. So just roll forward, so make sure that you're rolling straight, and then, oh. but later when they prog want to progress to like a real flip ball, can you turn to the side, please? Yeah. So put your arm in the V, and now the first thing again that's important is find your tipping point. So the tipping point is now, in this case, is right leg, one, and he has to feel, oh, I'm pushing myself forward, 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 I'm going, and actually at the point where he reaches this tipping point, then tuck your head in over your arm and kick your rear leg up. Can you show it one more time? Again, what we are not a big fan of is jumping, so, but since David can do it, he can show what it's like to do it uh, jumping. It's like jump and do something like this. Uh, this is more acrobatics and demonstrating, oh look, I can do a fall, and of course for young people that are agile, there's nothing wrong with doing it, but it doesn't make for realistic falling. What you get is students, just before they're being thrown, they're starting to, to jump. What we may want to mimic the motion that like really getting thrown makes. So, and there should be like an off balance point. One, and kick up your rear leg. Here. Usually this one takes even longer to use the other shoulder than, uh, what is it, the regular roll. But David, can you use your left shoulder once? Now you see the reason why I asked David to, to come today. Uh, and then we get like all kinds of uh, variations and uh, what is it, combinations. The first combination that we usually do with students is the front roll and the back roll. 
front roll, move one knee in, and again, make, now make sure that after your first roll, that first your knee is pointing forward. One. Then place it in, and then roll back. And don't move it in while you are going forward, a mistake that a lot of students make. Sort of like doing this, they're getting tired, and there goes the, the form. No, we want forward roll, have a nice clean change, and then roll up. One more time, please. The next one is a forward roll and a flip fall. <laughs> so the forward roll, David has to get enough momentum to get off the floor to make his flip fall. So, so again, not just by jumping, trying to roll as fast as possible, putting your momentum forward, pushing yourself over your tipping point, and go. But if you need a little jump to help yourself, why not? But the other thing that's more important, and usually that's caused when you're jumping, is that the motion stops. Can you like show it in stop motion? Two motions. Yeah, two separate motions. One, and then they have to oh, go. But you have to go in one fluent motion. One, two. Okay. Um, then for some advanced uh, falling techniques, we did the normal roll with circle steps. We can also do the flip fall with circle steps. One more time, please. Another one, usually a bit less complicated, is a roll and a soft front fall. Well, as you can see, after about 50 minutes of falling, even David is getting a little bit uh, tired. So that tells us that doing your falls is actually great for your physical condition, isn't it, uh, David? Absolutely perfect. Okay. okay. What, one more uh, technique. Can you turn your back to, uh, to us? So this is the, the back roll, so the, the, like with the turn. The first variation, we already showed it to you, is where, so David turns to his right, uh, sorry, to his left side, and then he's using his right hand to make the roll. Can you show it a little bit in slow motion, please? There's also a variation, is where he uses his other arm. So he lifts it up. No, now the other, to the other side. And so he's also using his left arm to make the roll. One, one more time. Can you show it over the other shoulder? Can you do it with a jump and a flip fall? If people in the chat want to see anything else, something that we are missing, please tell us. We'd like to hear from you. Quite a few people have uh, commented a bit. What I'm missing is the Korean friends we had last week visiting over. They're not in the chat today, which is strange because their what is big friend David is here.
Mick says he will do this in his next life. Well, too bad, Mick, there are no next lives. <laughs> okay. Um, of course, be before we started uh, this webinar, uh, David has done a decent warming up to uh, like make his body warm enough to actually be able to do this kind of uh, thing. So don't <laughs> do this kind of stuff when you're not, uh, what is it, warm, when you didn't warm up. Okay, that, that um, is the end of Annyeong Azeo, Ono Nachi Anke Wasimnida. Oh, somebody turned in late. Yeah, Annyeong Azeo, we missed you too. Uh, actually, <laughs> the stream has already come to an uh, end. So this, was our, this concludes our third webinar. We hope you enjoyed it a lot. Uh, we definitely enjoyed doing it, especially me today, because I only had to do the talking and start, instead of actually uh, performing. Uh, the upcoming week, again, from Monday till Friday, uh, we'll be doing uh, webinars for our members. And I said yesterday in our webinar, so Monday I will start doing uh, Chongi Bob and Jiggy Bob, so the Hangido visualization techniques, uh, the first one. So on Monday it will be Kwanjolki Bob, then on Tuesday the second one, Chigi Bob, then on uh, what is it, Wednesday, the third one, Sipchagi Bob, and so on, and so on. Um, well, it has been, uh, again, a lot of fun for us doing uh, it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. I hope David enjoyed yeah, today's did. webinar. A little bit tired now. <laughs> so I would say a round of applause for David is certainly in order. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. Bye.